So in our previous video, we completed topology optimization in ANSYS Discovery and output this faceted geometry that we're showing on the left side here. And in this video, we're going to show how to convert this faceted geometry to a more smooth, solid geometry, which we can then use to analyze in ANSYS Mechanical. So to do this, we're going to use some facet tools in ANSYS Discovery, including the shrink wrap, smooth, and reduce tools. Additionally, in this video, we're going to show moving that smoothed solid geometry over to ANSYS Mechanical and converting that into a solid tetrahedral mesh as we're showing on this page. So let's get started in ANSYS Discovery. So here we have our explore results from last time where we analyzed faceted geometries with 90 92 and 94 percent optimization. So now let's move back into the modeling tab and look at our faceted geometry. So when we complete the topology optimization it's going to output automatically these optimized geometry configurations. So here we have the we're interested in the 94 percent reduction facets. So I'm just going to quickly just cop make a a copy of this one so that we'll leave that here. We will um, then start working on this faceted geometry here. So we're going to come into the, I'm already in, but we're, we, if, if you weren't already in the facets tab, you can uh, load the facets tab and we can start out by doing a shrink wrap. The shrink wrap tool will create a faceted wrapper around our selected faceted body, which will assist in removing and smoothing over our small gaps. So gaps under the size value that we enter will be walked over, uh, while uh, distances above the size that we enter will remain unclosed. So one of the recommendations when you're doing the shrink wrap is it's a fairly quick operation. So this size of the facets that you're going to use to, to shrink wrap uh, can make a, a large effect. So you may want to select one size and then control Z and come back and, and repeat. In this case, I, I've tested out and two millimeters is a pretty good option. So I'm going to go ahead and, and complete the shrink wrapping and you can see that previously we had some maybe we'll we will do control z let's get out control z um, we can see in here maybe there's some uh, gap kind of in the bottom here and some some sharper edges uh, and then let's do the the shrink wrap operation once more and kind of we can see some of the the smoothing of the geometry that happens a, as we do the the shrink wrap. So it's then converted our geometry to it's it's renamed it shrink wrap. Um, but we're not quite done with it yet. We'd like to do just a, a few more operations. So the the first one we'll we'll do is we'll we'll smooth the geometry. The angle threshold will determine which edges will be sharpened. So any facets that are coming together above the angle threshold will remain unchanged. In this example, I'm going to set the threshold to 60 degrees. And then we're going to also select reduce. So and then in this one, we can select a percentage uh, triangle reduction that we want to do. So here um, we can do a 20% reduction. And we can see that the the amount of uh, facet surfaces that are remaining are, are, are much less. And, and maybe it's a little more jagged, so maybe we, we want to come through and, and do another iteration of smooth. So we can select our body and smooth yet again. So uh, here's our uh, geometry. And then again, before we go to move into mechanical, we'll need to convert this into 
a Tesla did geometry. So if we right click, we can convert to solid and either do a mostly Tesla did or fully Tesla did. Um, so this one will we'll take a little bit of time. So I've pre pre done it uh, in this uh, tree. So here we have our our Tesla to geometry that we will bring into ANSYS Mechanical. All right, so here we are in ANSYS Mechanical. We can see that same Tesla to geometry here on our screen. Now we want to convert this into a finite element mesh that we can use for to validate our topology optimization results. So we'll start out by coming to the mesh tab. And in this case, I've already completed a mesh to, to save some time, but we'll talk through the, some of the operations that I added. So the first change I made is I set a two millimeter mesh size. So in this one, I end up with around a half a million elements. Uh, we can see here, or sorry, half a million nodes and around a, a 360,000 uh, elements. And so that that's that's an it's an element quantity that I, that I'm okay solving on on my computer. You you may have different uh, constraints. Uh, so maybe in that case, um, a, a less fine mesh may may be required. But for me, I'm I'm quite happy with the, that that element count. So I proceed with a with a two millimeter mesh. And then when we're using these um, bodies that we've con that we've converted from from facets, we have um, many different surfaces. So um, one of the operations that can be quite useful to get a, a good mesh quality in this case is is a patch independent mesh. So to do this, we would right click, insert a method. And then within that method, we can see here's our patch independent, we would select the tetrahedrons method and the patch independent method. That way some of these extra surfaces can, can be ignored. Um, and additionally, yeah, we can, we're keeping the default size and we'll also allow mesh-based defeaturing of up to three millimeter surfaces. So when we do that, we can see here is our mesh. And so now in this mesh, I, I have the, usually we want, at, at worst, we want our, our minimum element quality to be 0.1 or more. So in this case, we have a minimum of, of 0.23, which is actually not so bad. Um, one additional item that I did have to do in order to get this mesh quality above 0.1 was to add a virtual topology. So um, when I did the initial mesh, I found that the, uh, the element quality at around this surface was was quite low. So I added a virtual topology um, so, so where I selected multiple cells and merged the cells to, to create a virtual topology surface here shown in green. So for example, if I wanted to further improve the, the mesh quality of, of these elements, I could select uh, on this under the um, mesh quality, I could I could select on this lowest bar to see these lowest quality elements. And if, if I was unhappy with these element qualities, perhaps a, a virtual topology would do quite quite well to improve the, the mesh quality here. Um, so yeah, there, there we have our, our mesh. Um, we can click away to see. Uh, we, we also maybe we, we'd like to, to confirm section plane. So we can, I've 
pre-cut a few section planes so we can just have a quick look to check the element uh, quality and size within the section. So here's on the feet. And then here, here's one going through the, the legs. So we can see, again, the feet and some of these, yeah, uniform size uh, tetrahedral elements uh, going up through the legs. So that's all for this one. We'll see you in the next video.